Hi, Dave Roscoe here. It is Tuesday, October 14th, 2025. And there's not much news happening today, uh, but I do wanna address a user comment about the new features that the Pi Network recently uh, rolled out. As I had mentioned at one point that I felt these features were largely more for developers and not so much for end users, but there would be a lot of questions. So we'll um, we'll get to at least one of those questions uh, in just a few minutes. Um, but first, the metrics. The circulating supply is 8.27 billion Pi, and there were 10,112 user accounts migrated yesterday, totaling 2.3 million Pi. There is currently 39 million Pi in the Pi migration wallet, and migrations are happening now. The migrated unlock rewards are at 3.17 billion Pi, with 3.2 million Pi unlocked in the last 24 hours, and now free to be traded on the open markets. This user asks, can you please explain what the new tokens are in testnet, and what they are for, and what the purpose of them are? So as a lot of you know, um, the Pi Network recently announced some new features that were coming, and one of them is the creation of tokens. And another one is the ability to swap tokens. And then there's the automatic market makers and liquidity pools, and some of these things are all tied together. With regards to tokens, this is not a user level feature. Uh, and I'll, let me explain. There's not any real reason. Now, you'll be able to do it eventually, but there's no real reason to do it unless you have a business or some other type of venture. The ability to create coins serves a, a few different purposes. First and foremost, it allows you to brand the coin for your specific needs. So if I'm running a business that says, you know, that says I'm selling furniture or something, I can create a coin that is related to my business uh, and and that's great um, that gives it a little more personality and another thing that it does is it keeps the coin within my economy so each time you create a coin you're in essence creating your own economy within the pi network blockchain why would you want to do that for one reason it's much easier to track so for example if i want to see what my you know sales are or what my holdings are or or how many coins are currently distributed i can easily see that by querying on my coin i don't have to infer the uh, individual like transaction histories from the root based pi coin so that's really an important feature so it allows me to keep my focus on my business using my coin and it and it prevents you know it it avoids the mess of trying to extract all that information from the entire blockchain um, database um, for the Pi coin itself. Now, another feature is the ability to add services and protections that don't exist on the Pi coin. Or when you create a token on a blockchain, the rules for transferring and all that are, are the same ultimately. However, you have more control over what happens to that coin based on what you wrap around it or what rules you put in place. Uh, for example, if you want to create a swap, you, you can put rules in place that dictate how the swap can happen. Um, and for things like if you wanted to, you could create a custodial wallet based on your coin. And that would provide protection for your users from things like scammers. Now, having multi-sig capability, which is something that was mentioned briefly, um, which is uh, inherent to the Stellar Core blockchain, but the Pi, but the, but the Pi network doesn't use it. Um, that would go a long way to protect users from scammers because just knowing the passphrase isn't good enough. You'd have to know two passphrases because one of them is the victim and the other is the secondary signature. And that's a lot harder because they're not gonna be giving it to you. Um, you could trick one person, but it's a lot harder to trick two. Um, so you could do things like that. And 
if you wanted to make it a custodial wallet that contains the coins, then it would just be up to you to create the wallet structure that you manage, which can accept these coins. And then you're in control. Like for example, uh, if you want to password protect it, you can. Um, and if you wanted to have the ability to reset passwords or pass phrases, you could do that as well. If you wanted to transfer from, you know, one wallet to another, you could do that. Um, and although you can do that now with the Pi network, although it's much harder to activate multiple wallets. So that's kind of limited. Um, but getting back to coins. Uh, so this is, this is not a user feature. This is something that will be used by DEXs, businesses, merchants, um, and even for like things like contests and um, sweepstakes and lotteries and that sort of thing. Um, and let's not rule out the possibility that the Pi Network itself may use this feature to create its own coin. It's not possible at this point to make the Pi base coin a stable coin. However, you can create a stable coin based on the Pi coin and use algorithms to uh, reconcile that with some fiat currency. So that puts a lot of things back on the table. So that's the gist of, I may have missed some of the more nuanced cases, but those are the big ones that I could think of that for reasons for wanting to uh, create coins. Now, this is available to everybody and the Pi Core team says, hey, you know, we want you to check it out. But honestly, you're not gonna get much benefit by creating coins other than to see what you can do with them, right? Just mess around, say, oh, hey, well, I can create this coin. Well, how many Pi coin is this is this worth? Um, and how is it funded? Um, and that sort of thing, because that's where li liquidity pools come into play. That's how you determine what the value of your coins are. And the automatic market makers are then come into play for swaps. Now, swaps are a, th a thing that you're definitely going to be interested in as a user with merchants and other um, people creating coins you're going to have a need to swap coins that you have for coins that you don't and that will allow you to continue to operate within the ecosystem even though you don't you know ha maybe have the native coin for something that you want to participate in using the swap mechanism, you can take coin Y, swap it for coin X, and then you're good to go. And of course, there are fees involved. And at least in the example they showed on the video, uh, the, the fees are in line with the Pi network fees. I don't know if there'd be a mechanism for um, introducing a another layer of fees that the merchant can control but there is a fee for swaps and the market makers come into play to determine how to fulfill your orders when you make a swap so a swap is kind of like just like an automated buy a buy order right um you say you want to you want to swap coin y for coin x and it says oh based on current price you know that's worth you know 0.5 of of x right and that may have to be fulfilled through multiple orders because no single person in the order book can fulfill it. And the automatic market makers have rules for things like slippage, right? When, when you say you want to buy something at a certain price, you're not actually paying for that price unless you happen to find a single source willing to sell at that price. And you know, at, at, when you get to certain volumes of, of transactions, that's not always possible. So when you get to that point, when you're crossing boundaries between individual um, orders on the books, then the prices change, right? So you can say that I wanna buy a thousand pi at 20 cents. That doesn't mean you're gonna get a thousand pi at 20 cents. What will happen is, is you'll get, you know, a certain number of pi at 20 cents, you'll exhaust that supply, and then you'll get, you know, another group of pi that's at like 20.1 cent and so on and so forth. And that's called slippage. And you can set rules for how much slippage you will allow. And what that means is that if the slippage doesn't allow you to complete the transaction, the transaction is either 
rejected or only partially filled, and the remainder either stays open or it gets closed out. And that all depends on how you want to manage it. Um, so creating coins, not so much a user thing, but knowing about them is definitely um, going to be something that users will have to become familiar with. And that just because it's on the Pi network doesn't mean it's going to map one-to-one -one with the Pi coin, right? Just like you can create meme coins on, on Solana or um, Ethereum or the BNB blockchain, those are all layer one blockchains. Every coin you create on a layer one blockchain is by definition creating a second layer, thus layer two. And the ability to create tokens is a layer two capability. So I hope that clears things up a little bit for you. I mean, crypto is a complicated subject, but it doesn't have to be you don't have to get into the, 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 the weeds to at least get a, a high level view of how things work. And I hope that at least satisfied your, your question in that regard. And an answer is one that maybe you would have asked next or didn't realize um, you needed to ask. And that was with respect to swaps and what automatic market makers are for. Uh, I did talk about automatic market makers in an early, early video talking about how the, um, the Pi coin could have implemented GCV using um, pegged pricing, but that was when we didn't really know what was going to happen, and that 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 um, that barn door was left wide open, and there's no getting that back. However, if the Pi coin were to create a layer two coin, then there's a lot more options. Now, I'm not going to say GCV is a thing because it's not. Um, Everyone's, everyone is just so convinced because it showed up in some non-sanctioned code related to the Pi network. Um, if you actually understood how little that meant, it would be laughable. For example, the wallet signatures use a path that includes Pi, right? It means nothing. It's just a way of creating a seed value that is used for the, the algorithm to generate passphrases and, and uh, public and private keys. Uh, but the value of Pi is in there because they could. That's all I've got for today. I hope uh, that was informational and useful. Um, if anything breaks, I'll be sure to hop on here and let you know. But until then, don't panic. Stay the course and remember, the success of the Pi Network begins with you. Pi to the moon. Peace.